These uh I have 18 Japanese maples in my yard. Have you? Yes, now I couldn't tell you the name of any one of them, but I love the trees. Well, you pick you out one that, that, uh, that you don't have. Why are they grafted? Why are they, are these all grafted? But, but, uh, not all of them. Come in, I'll show you. Oh, come on. Uh, first of all, you, you haven't been in the garden yet. No, sir. All right, the garden is right over the hill, and we're going, we're going over there. Okay. But it was, I had a place that was just really trashy and grown up in privet and kudzu and honeysuckle and briars and whatever. Trash. And uh, trash, and I wanted to clean it up, and I cleaned it up. And uh, it was coming off of this hill here, just in a in a valley, and it was a perfect spot to put in a Japanese maple garden. And so that's what we did. Well, when we put the garden in, we didn't have any trees, so I went over to Atlanta and looked at a Japanese maple nursery, and it was an older guy that owned it. He said. You need to buy all these trees. And I said, I can't afford all these trees. He said, I said, you'd have to have a fire sale. He said, well, I'll swear to And we you did. fell for it. Well, <laughs> he called him two or three days later and said, and we made a deal and I went over there. So I moved 670 20-year-old Japanese maples over here in the fall. They were made in pot. They were in the ground. They went in the ground in grow bags. I see. And uh, and we we he dug them. We moved them in the fall. And uh, and, and I put a lots of them in the garden. But I had I, I had too many, so I just started a little nursery. Yeah. And now I've got seven thousand trees. Wow. That was some, a long some, uh, up to twenty five years old now. Wow. Well, that was. That was five years ago. You created a monster. And, uh, so you've done all this in five years? Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, the, the, this up here you could do in, you know, in a short period of time, but what you're going to see down in the garden is pretty amazing that this has been done in five years. And uh, so, and we, we, don't, we don't have a lot of help. We kind of run on a tight budget. Sure. And uh, we, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things we, we, I mean, just can't afford. Then we just let it go and get to it when we can. But the grafting part. Okay, the grafting part. We're gonna get to the okay, grafting sorry. part. Okay, sorry. Okay, alrighty. But all the landscaping is done with stuff I picked up on the farm here, or rocks that came out of the creek, or whatever. Now, all of this. Most of this stuff right here came either I got local people to graft it or it came from Oregon. And uh, so, and it's a mixture and a combination and some of it I don't even know where it came from. Yeah. Most of it, we try to keep it local, but we don't always, uh, only, always do this one. Now, to get a, this is a cat sewer. And to get a pure katsura, to, to get a katsura tree, you got to graft this. This is, if you cut off the end of this right here, it would be a scion, called a scion. And then you would graft this to a green root stock. And I've got some I'll show you. Green. Green root stock, it's not necessarily a Japanese maple. It is a Japanese maple. It's a green Japanese maple. Okay. And, and, uh, and then when this graft starts, when this scion starts to grow, then you cut the, the green Japanese maple off, and then this becomes a tree. See where that was cut right there? Yes. You can see, yeah. see, see the grafting tape on it? Yes. Yeah. And this is, a, this is a tree right here that you ought to have if you don't have it. It's the first one that comes out in the spring. And you can see it's a different color green, turns yellow in the fall, and it's yellow in the spring too. And then it turns that light green. And, and How old is that tree? Uh, it's probably four years old. Wow. Now the rootstock's probably six, <laughs> six years old, but the graft is probably four years old.
Come down here and I'll show you some that were vested last year. Virtually all of these trees would prefer not to be an afternoon sun, is that true? And some of them can stand it, you know, rows around that water feature right there. They are right out in the sun. Yeah. Sure. And uh, and some of them, some of them will, will burn a little if you put them in the yeah. You put them in the sun. Uh, that's a little flame. It's got a red, a red mark. It's a, it's, it's like a Sango Kaku or Benikawa, except this one doesn't get quite as big. Here's some green seedlings that we'll graft to. Oh, this is this is the rootstock. This is the rootstock right here. Really? And I just got them from Oregon. And uh, so I'll grow them here for this this summer. We'll graft to these. That's small, huh? No, it, they'll be bigger by, by this summer. <laughs> I need to fertilize them, and then and some of them. Will kind of flimsy and I probably need to cut them off a little bit and make them get bigger at the base where we'll be doing the grafting. And those are red seedlings. We won't graft to them, but we sell a few red seedlings and I also plant them around the place here. And, it's, I mean, and to be honest, the red seedling and the green seedling probably is the, the best of all of them. But you can't get the variety. Now see here's some here's some new grafts right here. And this is this is a fire glow, which is one of my favorites of the red. And uh, this is a crimson queen. You can you can graft the the dissectums, which this is a dissectum, lace leaf to the same root stock as you do a regular upright Japanese maple. This is a unique little tree right here and it, it's a lace leaf and an upright. Usually lace leaves are more ground. Grow, right, but this one grows up like a tree. And, are you uh, self-taught or, or did you read the Well, I get it through osmosis. <laughs> I read a lot. And, and so you didn't um, go to school in this or anything like that? No, no. I got my first Japanese maple in 1981 when I moved to Auburn and built a house and the landscaper said you need a specimen tree here. I didn't know what a specimen tree was. So we brought in a green multi-trunk Japanese maple and that got me started. And I watched that tree and fell in love with it. It changed color three or four times a year. And uh, then I got into red seedlings and then I got into the varieties and, the different, and, I, and I made a really good friend with uh, uh, Harold Johnson. Harold Johnson is was a mechanic about five to 105 pounds known all over the world for his knowledge in Japanese maple. Right. He could pick up the phone and call anybody in the Japanese mill. And they knew of Harold Johnson. He had, he got one patented, but he named about 25 varieties. And was he here? No. He lived between Tallahassee and Montgomery. Okay. Yeah. When were these grafted? How long ago? The, oh, that was been a couple of years. Uh -huh. This one has. And, but uh, red, this, so this couldn't be grafted to the green rootstock? Yes, that's grafted. You look at the rootstock. I mean, but can you enter, can you graft from a red rootstock to a green rootstock? Can you graft, or do they have to be? Yes, well, you graft red trees to get to green rootstock. Okay, okay. And uh, you know, pulling weeds is an all-time thing. <laughs> you know. All right, now look. See. All right. We we'll get the weeds out of it first. Uh, you're going to pull some weeds from it. Well, you know. Okay. You now, you see, you see where the graft took place? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Now, that's a little different. That's a little different concept, kind of graft there. All right. Now, this is a green seedling trying to grow out below the graft. 
you got to keep it pruned off. So as that tree grows, it's going to grow into a fly glow. Yeah, that's a good plant. But if you let that green seedling grow down it'd, here, it'd it would outrun this. Would it? Yeah. Okay. So you keep it pruned off and and, uh, and then you, see, and most of them are going to have some. Yeah, see, at first, yeah. See this one right here? And would it trying to keep doing that with the life of, its, life of the plant? Well, it quit. If eventually it quits. Okay. Okay. But if it, you know, it might, it might, it might take it three or four years yeah, to sure. quit. But it might keep trying. Yeah. See that? See how yeah, sure, how right. that's grown? Yeah. Now that came out, you know, in the last. Now these are these are healthy grafts. Now look at the new growth on that one this year. Yeah, it's already just this year. Yeah. This two, this three months since. Right. Whatever. And the native. Now without... Here's one. Here's one with a lot of. Yeah. It's been sitting there because the roots are going <laughs> yeah, into the ground. I was going to say. All right, now see how much. And this is a high graft. Oh yeah, so it's a native plant below. It's, it's a native all... plant below, but it's a high graft. See, those right there are low. Yeah. This is a high. It's going to give this uh, an opportunity to cascade down, and it's just a different, di different technique and and. Uh, different shape. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we thought, you, just like you thought years ago, a, a Japanese maple is a Japanese well, maple. Yeah, well, you know, all of the, all of the uh, fruit trees, apples, pears, plums, all, all of that is grafted. All the fruit trees that we eat. And, uh, you know, the, this is a Murasaki Kiyohimi. That was a fire glow, the crimson queen, the waterfall. And this, I'm not sure what this is right here. Got a tag on it. Let's see. This is a this is a red emperor. It's very similar to the fire glow, but there's a difference in it. If you, this gets to be a bigger tree than the fire glow. And this is a this is a low graft on the dissectum which is going to, you know, it'll grow up from here, but it's going to spread. Blind. Yeah, and it's got a, it's got a low ground. Fly, if you get a close-up on it, it's variegated. And uh, see the variegation in the leaf? Now this was, this was probably grew on a tree, just got different genetics. The top of these trees are all that are different. All the different varieties have different genetics. The green rootstock has got different genetics, but it's a green root. It's a green seedling. Now, the reason that they all have you can't the reason you can't use seedlings is because they cross pollinate. And you might think you got a green a certain kind of a tree, and you have to, it has to grow three or four years or five years before you really know what that tree's going to be. Because it is variegated, it's harder to grow. No. No difference? No difference. Well, here's one down here that's a different, a different kind of a tree. It's interesting. I saw that yesterday. That's a beautiful tree. The leaves mm. are different. Look at, look at, look at the delicacy on, <laughs> on that right there. That's a cotoneito. And uh, the the leaves just you know they just they come a little wider, and they revert to that really thin strap leaf. They, growth on it. they start wide in the spring, and then no 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 they come this this is all new growth this spring. These uh, six weeks ago that tree didn't have a leaf on. Yeah. Those are beautiful. Does it I've stay relatively those. small? These are beautiful. No, they get to be about seven feet tall. Do they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Eight, eight maybe. Yeah, you got a plan for the future size. Yeah. Yeah, that is a different looking. All of these are. All of these are good graphs right here. And so that's kind of a menagerie of 
different plants, mm -hmm. but and you can but you can look and exactly to see the different colors, yeah. the different things they've done. Yeah, but they all they all a little different. Some of them, of course, are the same, but there's a, there's a there's a pretty good variety there. But, now that's, that's, that one stay green and red like that. Variegated? Yes, and that's and I'm not sure what the name of it is. It's uh, it, it could be a Benishienges. They got butterfly on it. Is for the label, but I'm not sure that's a butterfly. That could be mis mis. Boy, and some of these look like maples in the fall. Yeah. All right. Now <laughs> look, yeah. Look. Look. That's the new growth coming on those moonrise. Now. All of that right there is rootstock where the graft didn't take. The green seedlings are still living. And they'll, some of them will make beautiful trees, but it's going to be a green seedling. So you won't attempt to graft it again? We may. Okay. If, the, if, if, it, if, it, if it heals up and it's, it, it's strong enough and good enough, we may use it again. Okay. But I planted them. I plant a lot of them just on the place here. You'll take that and plant it. Plant it. Just plant it on the place here. Yeah. And uh, you know, 30 years from now, it may be 30 feet tall and be worth ten thousand dollars. <laughs> so, there's a market for. 20-year-old Japanese maple tree? Uh, well, uh, not a not a big market. Not many people can afford one. I got I've got uh, I sold two out of I sold two out of the garden last week for thirty five hundred dollars. Twenty five year old trees. Wow! But if you got a spot, you just need that right thing, and it makes all the difference in the world oh, in yeah. the landscape. Now, and you use see, a tree spade. We, those happen to be in a, a bags, wow. but we can, we can hand dig them and I've got a tree spade, uh, just whatever tree calls for and where, where it's located will determine how we, how we dig it up. This is not a good time of year to dig a sure. tree, but you can move them as long as they're in the bags, but just go out here and dig a tree. That tree was in a bag because you bought it that way, I assume. No, no. Well, it was in a bag, but we 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 oh, upped man. the bags when we got them. They put them in bigger bags. With the intention of someday selling it. Yes. Yes. I see. Long-term planning. Right. Now, those right there I dug out of my yard. And they were, get, they were getting in a crowded place. And, of course, that, those are native of the yeah. And, and uh, this is a snowball viburnum. That all of these are suckers that were coming up where we moved the tree from. Oh my goodness. These would be flaming azaleas? What's that? That general term flaming azaleas, native flaming azaleas? Those right there, those right there, those two yellow ones are Admiral Sims, and people call them Amazing, uh, wild azaleas, some people call them native azaleas. They got, you know, they got several names. That's a, that's a beautiful one. Well, that, that right there could be a uh, Florida flame. Well, that one is very pretty. Isn't it something? And this probably is an Oconee right here. They almost it's, have a honeysuckle look to the blue. They smell too. They smell like honeysuckle. Oh, they do. And uh, they also, uh, this one is is pretty close to being what we have here in the wild. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're a hoot to see in the woods. And would this last winter have been tough on you or not really? Tough on the plants? It's a great one. But it's good for the plants? Great winter. Really? Okay, yeah. a, wi a winter winter, huh? <laughs> well, it, not only that, it affects the insects. Yeah, it kills the bugs back. Yeah. Yep, as we need it. Let's, uh, let's ease over here around my chin. This is a noble home site here. Oh, okay, up on the hill. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the the old county road ran right by that birdhouse. Okay. Just the old gravel road? 
It's just an old county road. Yeah. I don't know it hit gravel on it or not. A, yeah, dirt road. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. dirt road. Yeah. This was back in the early 1900s, 1800s. And the home was that old? Yeah. The people that settled this country settled it for the heat. In other words, they wanted the, the coolest place they could build a house. Up high with the wind? Right. Yeah. And this is the perfect spot because you've got a, a flow here and a flow there and a flow back here of air coming up these those yeah. bottoms. Little draws. I didn't want to tear that chimney down. I wanted to leave it as a... This is part of the, house, the original home? That's the original. Really? That's the original chimney right there. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so I picked the chimney and made a water feature out of it. And it's certainly not a professional job because I did it myself. And I'm no rock maker. <laughs> but I, and this has got trees around it. Now they're gonna grow into each other and I knew that when I planted them. Yeah. But that's the calico, that's the tender chunko. This is the ornatum, the fire glow, the red dragon, the bearden, the fairy waterfall, the Diana. Oh. So this would have been the back wall of the house? Yeah, well, I mean, it could, it could have been in the middle in the middle bedroom. Oh, that's true, too. That's true. But I would say that with that brick like that, that's probably... That's pretty thick. That's probably the back of the house or the side of the house. That's a red seedling right there. These are... This two trees... I dug that one out of my yard. It was growing in a place where it needed to be moved. And... That tree right there. How tall would you say it is? Close to 18 feet tall. Oh, it's just a bit of that. Uh, and it's probably 16 or 17 feet wide. And I'd probably add three pounds taller. But it's, and it's probably 15 years old, maybe a little old. I planted the tree um, 17 years ago, oh, that kind of tree, and they're awfully close to the same size. All right, now, how many people are going to build a million and a half dollar house or a million dollar house and pay $75 for a tree that size up there. Oh, I know. They, the they go, they go yeah. to buy right. a first the state. Will they buy the big one? Will oh, they buy yeah. the big one? Yeah, they want oh, the state one tree. Yeah, yeah. 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 You want your landscaping right. to look My finished. Son, right, right, exactly. Can't My wait. son came here, he just built a little Christmas house in Buckhead in Atlanta. And he went through the garden and said, uh, I want to look the biggest trees you got. And I took us to the garden. He said, you got any more? I said, yeah, I got some down in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, but they go cost you. I said, I sold them to you. I have price. So he went down and picked out a blood good that was about 23 or 24 feet tall. A lot bigger tree than this one right here. And I said, that's $3,000. Wow. And, uh, I have and, a he, home. and he thought he got a bargain. I have a home in Charlotte. Like I said, I have 18 of these trees. I'm going to sell that home. I have a camp in Loosedale, Mississippi. Could I move them to that yes, camp? absolutely. I'd move them in a the van, put yeah. them in a the van, and what would they, I'd hire a nursery to put them in a bag? How would they do that? Oh, uh, like that. yeah. Or you something could, like that? You could, you could put them in a, you could put them in a ball and burlap uh, with a basket, or, but you need to, you need to, and make sure you do it in the winter time. Of course. At the end and of the day, it'd be cheaper to come here and buy them, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because I'm closer. Yeah. A lot closer. Now this one is, tree, David. This is a tree, tree right I'm here. Debbie was my biggest one. Mm -hmm. This thing. Yeah. And my son, this is a Syriu. See the little lace leaf on it? That's spectacular. You know, I told you that this is the only 
lace leaf that grows up right okay. like a tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. I went to Atlanta and dug this tree. There's three of them. A guy was fixing to landscape his yard or redo his yard, and he was going to destroy these trees. Mm -hmm. My son found out about it. I went up and dug the three trees, and he took two of them, and I brought this one here. But this is a, now that's a specimen tree. It's a beautiful tree. I left these on down. We're going into the garden down here. Would you sell this tree? Yeah, <laughs> I'd sell that tree. And what would that tree sell for? You know, I'd, have to, I'd have to think about that, yeah. I'd have to think about it. If this were in your yard, would you knock these off? Yeah, yeah, I'll take them you'd, off. You'd keep it open. Yeah. I'd, I'd, now see, I'm I'm a little bit shocked. You come in, I'll show you that the top of that tree. See, you can see where they cut it off last year. Mm -hmm. See where they cut it off last uh, yes, year? Yes. Uh huh. And that's and, and it's got three foot of growth from last year. All of that stuff looked. I was afraid that it wasn't going to leaf out and look right. And some of it is, is going, there's going to be a little dieback up there. But we got, when we dug it, we got a really good root ball and we got it planted good. So the move and all, we did as good as we could do. And of course, it'll never want for water. Though. It likes living there. Yeah. It's healthy. It's yeah. Be. That container just seems small for that big of a plant, but I guess not, huh? It is a little small. Yeah, okay. That roots that you would think that, that size of the tree would have a bigger root. We probably system. had to cut a little of it off to get it in. You access right, yeah. okay. This is a canora pigment. That is beautiful. And it grows it grows compact and uh, That's a pygmy? But it won't get big. Yeah. Sunshine. See, see, this is old road bed right here. Okay, county right road. On, went yeah. right on down the hill, right by my uh, hut lodge, and uh, turned and went across the creek. These these Japanese maples, I, you need companion plants and they need to be evergreen. Where they're gonna stay green year round. And uh, that's the best backdrop you could have. Okay. And that way the bark of the Japanese maples will show during the off season? The leaves. The well, leaves? Uh, yeah, okay. but now what you got in the, in the off season is the limb structure that grows in various ways. Now, This is a Japanese maple garden. But I've got companion plants all over it. For instance, these are rhododendrons here that grew up in the mountains. And at some point in time, those things are gonna be eight, 10 feet tall. Okay. okay. All right, there's another row of them down there. At the far corner, is gonna be predominantly native azaleas with, with Japanese maples next to them. On the left-hand corner is predominantly camellias with Japanese maples mixed in. And where the power line runs is going to be underneath it is going to be hydrangeas. And that's my favorite. That's mm -hmm. that covers my favorite plants for country landscaping. Those are all low maintenance plants, aren't they? Maybe except for the rhododendron. Well, these rhododendrons, I haven't done anything to them to plant them, really. As a Yankee, I sure have had trouble growing them. Well, you too low. They had to what? Well, the, you know, they are a mountain plant, so they're it typically. That's the reason I planted these up here on this hill. But now, I got, you can see there's a little hole there, I planted those in. And I planted them pitch water, but I planted them above the ground. I so They don't like wet feet. No, they don't. And I've got, I can show you some holes down there where there's no tree, and I kill them with too much <laughs> water. Yeah. Now everything you see here, all these plants, everything, 
Now move that cedar tree right there off the place here. But all of this stuff has been planted in the last five years. Every bit of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I got as big a plants and bigger trees as I could get to, to start with. You this don't sleep in too many mornings. No, I don't want to sleep. <laughs> you had understood. The clock they, is ticking. They, uh, I'm not sure what this is right here. It's a beautiful tree. Uh, it, it, I'm just not sure what it is. I don't know whether it's a, it, it could be an orangeola, which is one of the most weeping of the dissectums. It could be a Chantilly lace. I'm just, I just, I don't know. It didn't have a tag on it. And there's another one. I don't know what it is either. But they both like where they are. Y'all be careful coming down these steps. This is a different type of cedar. That's an Arizona cypress. That's a cypress, okay. Well, it's a cedar. Yeah. Well, right there. But yeah that's a... From Arizona, truly? Yeah. It, it's stiff. Yeah, it's really, I, 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 I've cut it's, it's stiff. Smell it. Cool you. Smell your hand. Whoa. Hmm. Almost smells a little citric. It does. Jasmine? That's a, I think that's a lady bank she rose in. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I guess it is. A, not many thorns, but there's some of them. Oh, yeah. This is Amazing. Ooh. There's a wild smell in it. Yeah. Did you design this yourself or have you had help? You know, This, because you can see where I cleaned up. Uh huh. I, there was a hole right there from erosion. We just made the hole bigger. Excuse me. And just followed the ditch going down the hill. The only thing that we changed or that we added following that ditch down, we came off of it about 30 feet and built it two burns down either side of the ditch to give us more planting space on the on the mounded burn. And you'll see it when we get down here. I'm pumping 300 gallons of water a minute from my lake into the water feature. It goes down the, the rock water feature here back into the lake. So we just circulate water. And uh, but it makes a nice. And to answer your question, I got a friend of mine that is, a, is in the landscaping business, and he's good. He's good. He's a good. A uh, Ricky Pope is a good rock mason or rock. Yeah. Yeah. And he calls himself a a redneck landscape artiste. I understand. It took him a week to build this water piece. We haul all the rocks to him, and and he just worked his way up that ditch. And then, but there was never ever anything put on paper. We just did what the eye said to do. But the the good Lord made it better than we could make it because it's a it's a bowl, and the elevations here are perfect because you can stop anywhere in the garden and see the whole garden because of the elevations. And and uh, now we put in the terraces to try to help control the water. And we put in the sprinkler system and, and uh, irrigation system. And, and But we did it all and I've never done anything like this before, but I was raised on the farm and I figured I could do it. And we did it. Just, you know, with my help, I didn't have any experience either. Uh, It's been a, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Maybe and a lot of work. Done in a short period of time. It's been a, 
Now, what we're trying to create in the garden here is a three-layer canopy. I want to overstory like we got on these pines right here in the garden. But it's going to be a mixture of hardwoods and pines and dawnwood woods and cypress and poplar and black gum. And, you know, all of those trees, we're going to create a three-layer canopy. We, you can see when you get out there that we limit them up as fast as they grow. Then we got an overstory, and we're going to have a mid-story with trees like this right here that are growing up underneath those, the, the overstory. And then we'll have a ground floor like this with plants growing on the ground. So you got three layers of stuff to look at. <coughs> now, where do you have the weddings when people have weddings out here? They have them over there where that tractor pool was. Okay, okay. So, and see, see, I've got some holes there where those sprinklers, over, those sprinklers overlap it. Mm -hmm. And it, got they got too much water. Now, this grass, these walking paths, have a dual purpose. And that's to walk on and to handle water. <coughs> The lack of, you know, having the lack, the lack of help and all, help and all. Now, you know, that's probably, it looks like that plant we call the butterfly, doesn't mm -hmm. it? sure does. <coughs> all right. You see this right here? That's a different type. It's grown in there. So what I'll do with this. Oh, yeah, I see the two arms of the original plant. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. So I'll cut it off right there. Okay. It looks like that's one too, isn't it? Yep. Yep. This, they, this happens on variegated trees. They revert back to the green seedling. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're mind of their own, huh? So you have to keep them trimmed well, I guess. Unless you, unless you want both. <laughs> All right, now look, look at this. Yeah, that's combination. Yeah, it is. But now look at this one growing over the same thing. Now, I'm not going to cut that one back, but I saw another one. Here's a big one right here, see. This got no variegation in it at all. Do you have to bring in soils, or is this all native soil? This is all native soil. <coughs> and it's not the best. I know I saw the stuff up by the office. It's really sandy. Yeah, this is sandy loam with clay gravel mixed in it. So this is essentially the root stock coming through. Yeah. Huh. That's why. Is that a birch over there? Some sort of the whitest bark? That's a, that's a not all oak tree. Those two are the same. All of these are the same. Really, that whitest bark? Mm -hmm. How long has this how long has this been this garden been here? Five. Five years. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have I'd have some fish in here, and I had some fish in here, but the blue herons want them bad as I do. <laughs> so <laughs> if I'm gonna have any fish in here, I've got to get a net put over this thing, or kill the blue herons, and I don't want to do that. Do some plastic fish with a motor. Yeah. <laughs> This is a this is a Murasakia hen. Three of them right here, and they uh these three these three things are going to go together. Big 
these in here, and this one is going to have overlap this one here. A little big one here, and it's going to be three separate panels. I don't know if there's any way about this. Why is it the iris can tolerate such wet feet? Those are water irises. Those are water irises. Yeah. Silly question, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. These are two dawn redwoods here. These trees will get to be 100 feet tall, 125 feet tall. Now the odd looking... That's, a, that's some type of tree. Okay. These redwoods will tolerate this heat, obviously, because they're here. Yeah, I, it, it, uh, I have a running battle with the deer. You see, here's that trying to go out below that. And it looks like that's an orange green, I think. Oh, it's green. It looks like the deer like it too. Has that been a problem, deer eating these plants? Yeah. But I've got the, I've got a permit to get them. Take care of that problem, huh? Well, <laughs> the, 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 you know, they, they do a tremendous amount of damage. They do, and they like the tender green. Yeah. Well, this is a seedling that I'm letting go. Yeah, sure. Came up as a, you know, under oh, that yeah. thing. Yeah. There's a seedling right there I'm gonna let grow. And I'm gonna dig that one up right there on that series. Now, will you just let them grow so far and then prune let, them the way no, you I'll want let, them to I'll be, or will you be grow, natural? I'll let that one grow right there and they'll grow about as tall as that pine tree there. Okay. Over 20 or 30 years. Okay. Somebody else will watch it grow, not me. <laughs> I don't know that it's the right time of day, but, and I'm not sure whether that's an ever red or crimson queen, but it's getting to be a right pretty tree. Mm -hmm, it's beautiful. And what you get is, is the reflection in the, in in the, water. the water. In the water. This is a little thing that I really like. It, it, it's changing colors. It, it's got with the new growth, Shin to Shoujo. And uh, I, I just like the, uh, the new colors coming on all the time. This is one right here that you see me cutting this stuff back. Mm -hmm. I still need to get my car on this one. But I came with them just uh, digging it up and doing away with it. But it's come back and made it for the nice tree. And I think in time it's going to be fine. Did this be long leaf? So I dug out of my yard and brought up here. There's another one right there, and there's another one right there. South was covered by this. This was a dominant tree four years yeah. ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the one that found with here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Found the rest of Yeah. That's a that's a green seedling right there. I had two trees that died there, and I'm not even can remember what they were, but they were bad trees, and I just put those two seedlings there. I had a lot of red here, and it seemed like. I'm sorry, I know you've explained this twice, but a seedling was a, 
it's a seed that falls off the tree and just right. grows up. Right. Volunteers. That's what I gave you. I'm like you. I like this one. It changes color as it grows. That's what she, she showed doing right there. That's a blood good. And this is the Osho Benny. Yeah, you can see that one's got the blood on it. Yeah, that's a good one. 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 There's, there's four Crimson Queens, an Orangeola across the creek is a Ornatum. The next one is a waterfall, and then I'm not sure what that other one's going to be. And, and the red one up there. This is one of my favorite of the dissectors, just whatnot. It's kind of like that Shinja Shoujo, it changes colors. All season. year, throughout the season, putting on new growth. Mm -hmm. This may be my favorite tree in the whole nursery here. Beautiful. And, and this is a, a Zahi Zuru, variegated. And uh, Bill Shell, my one of my Japanese maple mentors, this tree was in his yard, planted in a crowded place with a lot of shade, and it wasn't variegated. And I didn't know it was variegated either, but green seedlings, and that's what I thought it was, uh, do well in the sun. So I'll put it right here where it gets a lot of sun, and the variegation came out of it. Wow. This is effectively full sun here, is it not? I mean, it's awfully close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it gets shade, it gets shade a little. Eight hours a week. So that's, that's a pretty good size tree to move right there, isn't it? There's three really big, nice berries here. One, this one, and that one over there, and there's another one. Now this is an everred. Just, just making a nice tree. I have uh, these at home. Three of them, all together. They, uh, they're making a. That's another crimson queen, and that's a crimson queen. That's a corkscrew willow. Ooh. That's what they use. Uh, these flower decorators use this corkscrew cork willow for uh, decoration. That's a. Now that. See that little pink one right there? Mm -hmm. Can you zoom in on it with that camera? That's a Hannah Matoy. And that's the only one I've got. i got to take a lot of cuttings off of it this year and get, get some grafted. Is that a hydrangea there? No, that's a, that's a Bob Burnham snowball. Is that a flower in the spring? Yep. It, it, uh, I, I dug that one up and moved it in there. And it's just, it's just, it's just coming back. There's two or three interesting things right here. This is this is an Abigail rose. Look how it grows. Like a little furry animal. This is one that Harold Johnson named after his granddaughter, Abigail. And this is a. That's a beauty uh, there. Right here. Yeah. This is a. This is a very popular. Come in and get the color on this. That's a Shiraz. That's good as it gets. And it's it's variegated. Yeah. And look look right here. This is a. This is a red feather. Look how dainty. So where is the dye? This is Where's the, the dye one. This is the tree right here that Harold Johnson had patented. 
It's a Benny Sheehan. And it's very good. See the variegation in it? This is a Cheyenne. And the characteristic of this tree is it has a nub. See the little nub right there? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, it just grows into a, a nice bush, not too big, thick. That's a beautiful tree there. We got a red seedling coming up over here. There's a guy came down here the other day. He's got a Japanese maple garden and wants that tree. And I said, you know, that tree is in the garden. That tree actually came from Auburn. They had it growing up there in a the field and they weren't taking care of them and they had sweet gums and cedars and all growing up through them. And, but I told him, I said, you know, I'm gonna let him have it if he wants it bad enough. And I, I'm not so sure that he does. This is another canola pigment. Y'all saw up on top of the hill? This is just growing different. But that's making a pretty spectacular tree. It's different. Burgundy lace. believe this is you've done this in five years this is amazing they uh well you know you just do something every year and you we did, we did a lot early on but the big thing was getting the big stuff in here see i i moved all these pine trees off of my place here in other words tree spade and brought them in here and planted them and the poplars like and the oak here? What? Like this tree here? Yeah, I moved that tree. You moved that tree? Yeah. All, every pine tree you see in here, I moved. All these big ones? Not no. the big ones. But these, all of these in this circle that we've been walking in. I moved that weeping willow out of my yard. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's getting to be a handsome tree. Mm -hmm. A severitus. That's that's probably my favorite of the green. That's a beauty there. That is really, oh, this is pretty. This is uh, peaches and cream. Oh my goodness. See here. It's actually this is new growth red and it's, it's going to turn a variegated green. But it, it it doesn't get real tall. It just makes a big bush too. This is a dancing peacock, and it grows. It's got a it's got a leaf like a peacock's tail, and then the fall of the year it turns gold and yellow and red and orange and blue and Ooh. just all the colors of the rainbow. This is this is one of my favorites right here. This is. A, let, let get a little close up on that. This is the Aka Shigatatsu Sawa. Can you say that? <laughs> Aka Shigatatsu Sawa. You got it. <laughs> You're listening. See that? He's smart. But isn't that, isn't that beautiful? I love the variegation. That's yeah. Good. Japanese maples are originate in Japan. All over the world. All over the world. All over the world. They might have started in Japan. Okay. Well, they might have been the first ones to recognize the beauty, but they come from all over the world. This is a this is a different deal here, and I like it. And somebody gave it to me, and I can't ever remember the name on it. It's got a it's got a tag. Anybody see the tag? It's, okay. It's, Floating clouds is a, but it's a, isn't it pretty? Look it's at the beautiful. green. They all are. A different color green. 
Oh, dang, I got some wisteria there. Where did that go to? Yeah, let's see, right here, yeah, that's, you want to pull, I can pull it out once you get that one. Yeah, sorry, David. Yeah, okay. Right. There you go, we got that in. Well, this tree right here, you can't exactly look at it in tails, but it's, it is probably, I'm gonna say it's probably 70 years old, and that's you can see that tree was 16, 18 feet tall when I dug it, and I pruned it back, and I pruned it back every year, and cut the dead. See, that's dead right there. I'll cut that off. And I, and I, but I moved a lot of them. An old horticulture guy uh, planted these, and they had grown up in all kind of trash and stuff. He had them behind his house and he was dead and his son wasn't taking care of them. And looks like we got a yes. sucker coming up right yeah. there. Volunteer? Yeah. Over here off Got another one? Right. Was that a planter? Was that a sucker? No, I, I don't know what that looks like it's a planter. But I've, I'm, I've got to le learn about these. Uh, Camellias, aren't they? Yeah, they're all camellias, yeah, but I they. I thought this was when I saw the leaves. The deer like them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh well. They handicapped them a little. You got to support the wildlife too, sir. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's a delicate balance. Did you get a picture of that snowball by by I Burnham? I did. Yeah. I'm gonna. I've got all those up there in the pots. I'm gonna follow them around. I don't like them on the outside. Uh, it's background plants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, They'll make a staple wherever they are. How many acres of gardens do you have? Well, the whole place. It's, the garden stops right here, but it goes into another garden in my yard there. And how much help do you have? Me and Rollo and William. So there's three of you? Three. I afraid you see all these weeds, and I afraid I carry these <laughs> clippers with me all the time. Gardening is a full-time job, that's for sure. Well, I'm never bored. Labor, labor of love. Yep. That's a tri-bent maple. I like them. Mm -hmm. They're a nice tree. They're, they're using them a lot in cities now. This is a dwarf green cedar. That tree is 20 years old. Oh, my. And this is probably my favorite of the green. It got unbelievable fall colors. Was like a fifty. That's a red emperor. We have one of these in our yard. And this is a, another burgundy lady. I take it the magnolias like a little more sun. That's why you've got them on the outside edges. Is that no? I put them down there to stop the traffic from from going into my yard and create a screen between the yard and the, okay. and the garden. And the area. You notice I planted live oak, and on down in that further, I got uh, a that, that was a wet spot in that field right there, and I just took it and made a little pond out of it. The water runs out of this little pool right here, and it's underground into that one runs out of that one into another water feature going into the lake at my house. Just the natural drainage though. Right. Now what is this one? It's an anaconda folium. It's, a, it's, it's close to the same or the same as that dancing peacock. See the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the leaves on it, structures. This, here's another picture of a, a different picture of the Abigail Rose. Isn't that, look, look, look at that thing. Isn't that something? It is beautiful. It's almost pink. All, all, all kind all of colors. colors. Yeah. I have a lot of dogwoods in my yard, native, and then I have the ones I planted. 
I think that's the plant of dogwood. My plant of dogwood is never flower. Is that your experience? No, they're flower. They're flower when you get old enough. Like Ten years old. Well, they should be flowering. Now here's a tree right here. You can see that it was badly damaged in the in the move when I moved it, and it's probably got some borer damage. And I didn't want to put it up there in the garden to sell. I didn't want to, I didn't want to sell that, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to do away with it. So I brought it down here in the in the garden and planted it. But this. Look at the variegation on it. It's kind of like that Azahi Zuru, but it's an Arido Nishiki. And I'm thinking that I might ought to go up and cut the top out of it and just let this stuff here grow. So the variegation's gone out of the top, basically. Mm -hmm. And here's another one right here, kind of the same way. That's a dogwood. That's another Cheyenne with his nerd. And that's a year of to see it in here. That one is that. Crazy Crinkle. Crazy Crinkle. Alright, here's one right here. This different. Look at the little tiny. Oh, it's from. very delicate. Okushimo. See the little tiny leaves on it? And they curl up on the... What do you mean? And it's got a little, it's got a little stuff going on it too. I don't need to be there. You know, a lot of people walk through here and they don't, I see every little thing about them. How it's doing and. This a live oak? No, that's a willow oak. Willow oak, yep. And that's a willow oak. That's growing? I, I moved over here five years ago. All these came out of spade? These were dug in a nursery and moved in here. It's got the shape of a pin oak, sort of upright and bushy. A pin oak, I believe, I don't believe a pin oak loses its leaves in one time. They, they're losing, I've got an extra neighbor's got one. The, lead, the bottom leaves are just dropping off and the top leaves are coming out. Yeah. It, See, I don't, I don't like a tree that loses, an uh, old tree that loses its leaves in one time. Doesn't seem right, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> okay. I just, I'd rather look at a, now, the only tree that I like that doesn't lose its leaves in the one time is a beech. And it has a beautiful tan leaf. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. It yes. doesn't shrink up and look like it's dying. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah but seeing the beech trees out in the woods in the in the winter is, right. is it great, that, that tan color. Now, come here, come here. Uh, oh, oh, let me get you. And see, here's, here's your companion plant. See that, that white viburnum up there? with the red and different colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, now that's what's pretty. And I need, I need the, I need some more white in here. A lot of these trees will turn, leaves are green up in the summer. Yeah, uh, no, not the red. Uh, some of the, well, some of them, yeah, some of them. A little will. bit, yeah. Get more light on them, the colors really come out. I'll have to move some of this stuff around some at some point in time. Now all the rock was here on your land, no, and you've all, moved it yeah, around. Yeah, we looked at it, and if you if you look at the rock work, you know, it might be a day that I got half a dozen workers, and I'd give each one of them spot. This is your spot. So one guy did this one right here. Didn't know nothing about rock. I said, just 
I want you to lay it with your personality. So that's what he, that's what it is. And there's another one over there. There's, you know. Mm -hmm. But all of the rock came off the place here. And it, uh, All right, let's head back up the hill. I bored you old enough. Not at all. You are not boring us at all. All of these trees are the trees that you bought, brought in, and planted? All the bigger ones. Now, we sold most of the ones that size up in the garden and in the nursery. There's one right there. Now, see, a lot of these trees that I moved down here were not specimen trees. They had something wrong with them. But I didn't want to put them up that way. I was going to be trying to sell them. So I could put them down here and nurse them. And then if they made it, fine. If they didn't, then I could dig them up and put another one there. What is this one? That is a, I think, that may be a boss coop glory. I had a tag on it, I know. I don't think it's a blood good. Yep. The outer leaves are incredibly vibrant, aren't they? That it, looking from below. It's looking for, yeah. that's what I was looking yeah. at. It's, it really catches your eye. I, I really like that. that. I know, I spotted that one. Well, I really like that tree. It just really stands out. And, uh, <clears throat> they hold their color a long time in the fall of the year. I think that's a blood good. And here's a, here's a, uh, uh, butterfly that, uh, that, you know, is holding the variation pretty good. This one, I started to dig it up two or three at a time. And just put it in the trash can. It's coming back, huh? Yeah, look at it. Yeah, I understood, yes. Yeah, that's, right. that's how it was when I planted it. Yeah. So it struggled its way along, and, and, and uh, but it's still not a healthy tree. See that moss growing on it? That's a bad sign. Omuriyama. It's a nice green. Bark and trunk. Doesn't get too big. Got beautiful gold and yellow color in the fall. Three of them right there. Did the deer do a number on your hostas? Oh yeah. They like him. Yeah, they love ours. This is a bug in the lace. You can, you can look at the leaves and see why they call it burgundy. And this is a... Uh, Sojo Nomura. This is another Cheyenne with a funny leaf on it. That green tree right there, that is a Gwen Reed. It's got two or three names, Dr. Tilt is one, because Dr. Tilt at Auburn Horticulture Department, he's the first one that grafted it, but it came out of Gwen Reed's yard. It's the prettiest Japanese maple in Auburn. 
and that tree came from Auburn. But it, it, you can see how much I've cut off of it. Oh, yeah. And cut it back and cut it yes. back and cut it back. And I think I need to cut it back one more time and then let it go and it's gonna make a beautiful tree when it's sitting right there. Thank you, thing. You had that white and red up there? Time fast. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is. And the sign's around the other side. Is it, is it, I don't think, what does it say? Does it say Chantilly Lane? I don't know. Am I at FPM yet? Green mist. Green mist? Green mist. I didn't know we had any. This is one that is a seedling or something that I just like the color of it and I brought it up here and painted it. Now this tree right here, I wanted a, another tree here and I couldn't plant one this side. So I just painted a, a three gallon. That's what it's done in five years. All of those are blood goods right there. And see, there's the dogwood right there that I planted. And, you know, if you want one dogwood, you better plant three. <laughs> yeah, I, 